Hello everyone, I hope you're doing well, and of course Arnie does too. In today's video, we'll be focusing on the beautiful country of Mexico. Mexico is one of the most biodiverse countries in the world, with many different iconic animals calling it home. One of the main reasons behind its biodiversity is the fact that it houses so many ecosystems and habitats, from tropical rainforests to temperate desert and alpine tundra. These habitats house carnivores such as ocelots, pumas, and jaguars, and Mexico's rich marine waters house many species of whales, dolphins, and manatees. Mexico is thought to have around 10 to 12% of the world's biodiversity, making it the fourth most biodiverse country in the world. As Mexico has so many diverse ecosystems, it's important that we protect it. Like many other large countries around the world, Mexico is also home to some problem invasive species. Invasive species in Mexico are a major cause of biodiversity loss. They alter ecosystems affecting native species, and they can also cause large economic losses. Invasive species have been a problem in Mexico since the arrival of the Europeans, but more recently they've become a major problem on Mexico islands, with 12% of endemic birds and 20% of endemic mammals becoming extinct because of introduced species. And I'll be going through just a few of these invasive species today, as I'll be going through five invasive species in Mexico. And for our first species, we'll be heading to Southeast Asia, as we have the common house gecko. Although the original habitat for these geckos were thought to be rich bushland, as you can guess by their name, they now show a preference for urban environments. It really is beneficial for these geckos to live near people, as streetlights and homes attract insects, which these geckos are more than happy to snap up. In many ways it's very beneficial for humans to have these geckos around, as they get rid of cockroaches, termites, wasps and spiders. And on this diet of invertebrates they can reach a maximum size of around 15 centimeters long. These small geckos are non-venomous and usually are not harmful to humans, but these geckos can be aggressive towards other species, and this is just one of the reasons why they are one of the worst invasive geckos in the world. It's thought that these geckos first found their way to Mexico as stowaways on ships. They were first sighted in 1895 and were well established by the 1940s. The main impact of the house geckos invasion were the decrease in number of the native geckos. The house geckos are more aggressive than the native species and easily outcompete them for food. They also brought with them new diseases and parasites, which can easily be spread to other reptiles. As these lizards also prefer urban environments, they also come with some other negative impacts. They have a loud signature call which often keeps people awake at night. Their faecal droppings can also get into people's food, and this is proven to be a source of salmonella poisoning in many areas. So although they can be very good at getting rid of creepy crawlies, they shouldn't be in Mexico. But for our next invasive species, we'll be heading to South America, as we have the monk parakeet. This bird is normally found in subtropical areas, such as open savannas and palm groves. But more recently, these parakeets have proven to be very adaptable and will happily move into urban areas. In the wild, their diet consists of berries, blossoms, buds, fruits, nuts, and seeds. On this healthy diet, they reach an average size of around 29 centimeters, but females tend to be a little smaller. The monk parakeet is also a very popular pet, and this is the reason why it's been imported into many countries around the world. And as many of these birds escaped, there are now feral populations in Europe, Asia, and North America. The monk parakeet was first recorded in Mexico City in 1999, and since then their numbers have grown. In many areas where they have been introduced, they're seen as a welcome splash of color, but they can have some negative impacts on the native wildlife and also to infrastructure. They are known to compete with the native Mexican parakeets, and these birds also steal the nests off other birds, sometimes displacing their eggs. But if these birds decide to make their own nests, they can cause damage to infrastructure. They're known to build nests in large historical buildings, and they also build them around electrical infrastructure. As these nests are normally made out of dried twigs, this can sometimes lead to fires, causing thousands of dollars of damage. So far their impact hasn't been too drastic, but I'm sure they're not popular with the native birds. But for our next species, we'll be heading to the marine waters of the Indo-Pacific, as we have the lionfish. Now there are quite a few species of lionfish, but we will be focusing on just two today. In their native range, they're normally found in warm, shallow coral reef environments, where their striking patterns help them blend in. In these waters, they are ambush predators, and will use their large fins to corral and trap fish, so they can be easily snapped up. As these fish only reach a maximum size of around 47 centimeters, they are still vulnerable to large predatory fish. Large groupers and sharks will happily take them out, but they do have some effective defenses. Lionfish have venomous dorsal spines that can be thrust into predators. This venom is usually not fatal, but is enough to ward off many would-be attackers. Today, the lionfish is one of the most famous invasive fish in the world, mainly thanks to the pet trade. Mexico has many problem invasive fish, with suckermouth catfish, tilapia, and carp being some of the main offenders. 
most of these invasions are the result of fish farming or from people releasing their unwanted pets. This is thought to be the reason behind the lionfish invasion, as they can now be found in the western Atlantic and the Gulf of Mexico. They were thought to be first introduced off the coast of Florida in the 1980s, but soon spread southwards. As these predators are so efficient at eating small reef fish, they totally wiped out populations, and the predators in their new waters did not recognise them as prey. It got so bad in Florida that there was once a bounty on their head, but in recent years their numbers have started to decline. This is because native predators have now started to target these lionfish, and there are now efficient ways of trapping them. As the ocean is so large, there's no way of completely eradicating them, but hopefully their numbers will be under control in the future. But for our next species, we'll be heading over to India, as we have the house mouse. Now although this species was once only native to the Indian subcontinent, it can now be found almost throughout the world. This is because it's one of the most successful animal invaders, mainly due to its relationship with humans. This relationship dates back at least 8,000 years, as these mice would often eat scraps that humans left behind. In the wild, these rodents originally fed on insects, grains and fruits, but urban mice will happily feed on anything inside the household. On this varying diet, they can reach a maximum size of around 10 centimetres. Because of their close relationship with humans, they've managed to spread very quickly and they caused the most damage during the period of European exploration and colonisation. In many areas, these mice are also responsible for the importation of other invasive species, as they feed on many grains on farmland. Many countries have imported predators to keep them under control. In many cases, these predators then become invasive, which causes even more problems. The house mouse's invasion of Mexico is by no means recent, but they have started to cause more problems on the Mexican islands. Many endangered birds choose to nest here, and these mice are known to eat their eggs and even nibble on their young. As these mice breed so quickly, it's almost impossible to eradicate them, and any poisoning attempts could also poison the birds. So although these mice have been invading countries for thousands of years, they are still causing problems today. Before our next species, we'll be heading to Cuba, the Bahamas and the Cayman Islands, as we have the greenhouse frog. This frog normally lives in moist leaf litter, often near human habitations. They are very rarely seen, both because they're nocturnal and because they're incredibly small. They reach a maximum size of around 31 millimetres or 1.2 inches long. This small size means they feed on small prey, such as ants, beetles, mites and small spiders. As these frogs are so small and hard to find, they make great stowaways, as they are thought to have found their way to Mexico as stowaways on tropical plant shipments. These frogs threaten native invertebrate species, and as they are so small, infestations of this species are normally overlooked until their populations are out of control. One of the things that's helped these tiny frogs spread so quickly is the fact that they don't need water to reproduce. Like some tree frogs, they lay their eggs in damp environments, and the young go through their tadpole stage inside the egg. So although they're very small and cute, they are still a big problem in North America. But that's about it for this video. If you have another location you want me to cover, then leave it down in the comments below. But thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you liked it, please leave a like and subscribe if you want to see more videos like these. But until next time, goodbye.